Welcome back to the channel everybody. Trey with G-Squared Tactical. I hope you all are doing great today. We have the new Beretta APX A1 on the channel with us today. So Beretta's version of their micro compact 9mm. As most of you know, micro compact 9mm are pretty much overtaking the market. They're, or not overtaking, but they're becoming increasingly popular. They're super popular. Uh, mostly because everybody's all about that concealed life, which I can't blame you, I suppose. But, you know, there's some pros and cons of this particular micro compact 9mm that I kind of want to go over with everybody before maybe you go out and choose to buy one. Or if you're kind of on the fence, maybe you want to buy a Taurus GX4 or you want to buy some other micro compact 9mm. There's so many options out there, but what makes this one different? So we're going to kind of get into that today. So the features of this pistol... As most of you are kind of noticing, it's not an all-black gun. So Beretta has come out with four different color schemes. You have the all-black, the FDE, you have your wolf gray that they call it, and then you also have this OD green. Now, the gun store that we picked this up at had all four colors in stock. They had the gray, which was kind of my second choice, I suppose. So if they didn't have this green, I probably would have gone with gray. But all the colors were the exact same MSRP of about $399 plus tax. So right around $423, somewhere in there, I believe, is what we paid for this pistol. The normal MSRP is about $450. So a kind of somewhat expensive micro compact 9mm, but it has a lot of bells and whistles about it. Beretta has really done a lot with this trigger. It's all they talk about whenever they're mentioning this trigger or mentioning this gun rather. They're just, they're so over, over the moon about this trigger. They think it's the best thing on planet earth. And, um, you know, I, I can't necessarily blame them. I think it, it's a, it's a cool looking trigger. As far as the reset goes, it doesn't really have one. I mean, you basically have to let it all the way out before you come back to pull until you reach your break again uh, and fire the pistol, obviously. But it's really not that, it's not that phenomenal. I don't think, um, I think the Taurus GX4 might have a little bit better of a trigger as far as handling it, managing that reset, which overall plays in how well you're going to perform in a situation where micro compact might be needed. So I like the trigger, but also don't, I just think it's gritty. I think that the very first initial take up, as you can see, it's kind of like it breaks, right? But that's not the actual break. So that's not your wall that you're hitting. So, so once you, so you have that initial break and then you come back and then you hit your wall. So a rather tight trigger pull, probably looking at about six pounds on this pistol. So nothing light but also there's no safety on this pistol you don't have a manual thumb safety you don't have a grip safety so very important that you have a higher trigger pull on this specific firearm because they anticipate you carrying this pistol it is a micro compact after all you do receive front and rear slide serrations indented very pronounced i like those slide serrations in comparison to other pistols that maybe didn't focus as much on making them indented into this pistol so very good job with that Beretta, very good job. Um, I like the sight setup. You have a two, or you have a blacked out rear sight leading into a one white dot front sight. My favorite um, of all pistols ever, I suppose. I really like that. I like being able to focus on that front dot and not having any distractions in the backyard, if that makes sense. So. I, I'm, an, I'm over the moon when it comes to these, these pistols that have sight setups like that. And it always makes me like the pistol more whenever it has a sight setup like that. So there is nothing really ambidextrous about this pistol other than the slot serrations, I guess. But So you don't have an a ambidextrous mag release, which most pistols don't. But you don't have an ambidextrous uh, slide lock and or takedown. So... You know, really not a big deal. It is a micro compact pistol. So when creating one of these pistols, you know, we, we always, our first initial reaction is to rag on the features that these pistols don't have. But in the retrospect of things, you don't really want all of the bells and whistles on a micro compact pistol. You're going to be concealing this pistol. So what good is it going to do you to add the extra weight? So now, you know, because every ambidextrous feature you get on this pistol or any 
micro compact for that matter is going to add weight. You want a lightweight pistol. This pistol coming in right around 19.8 ounces unloaded, so just a slight bit over a pound. You do get about four inches of height on this pistol and about 5.63 inches with a three inch barrel on this pistol. So a relatively micro compact frame platform altogether. A very easy to work on pistol as far as taking it down, cleaning it. We won't do that today on today's video, but just letting you know that it is very easy to take down, manage, clean, oil, whatever it is that you're going to be doing after your range trips, which hopefully you'll be taking a lot of because micro compact pistols are that much harder to get on target. I will say this, speaking of getting on target, you can outfit this pistol with a micro red dot or a red dot, whichever one you choose. So this is one of my beefs with this pistol. I do not appreciate the fact when I get a pistol that has a optic cutout plate. Now, back up a little bit. So I understand it, right? If it's Taurus, if it's some other company that is trying to be 100% budget friendly to their end consumer, I get it. You know, don't provide me with an optic plate. I'll buy one on your website. I just don't care. Like, if I want to put an optic on there, I will. Thank you for providing me the option by cutting out the slide. But at the end of the day, if you're Beretta, I mean, Canik does it for goodness sakes. Like, they give us so many optic plates to mount optics on, on their pistols. This pistol is a $450 MSRP pistol, and I got I now have to pay $29 for their micro optic plates that they have. So they, I found three different plates on their website, right? So, but and you got to pay for them. They're $29 a piece. You have the Seymour Systems, um, which, excuse my my facial expression, but I'm I'm just I'm not real familiar with Seymour System optics. I want to be more familiar with them, but they're $389. Um, one of them is over $400 and that's just not something I want to be familiar with right now. My bank account don't want to be familiar with that. So with that being said, you also get a shield optic plate that you can get. So you can mount your shield RSMC, other shield footprint optics. I think, um, Crimson Trace might make a shield red dot or a shield fitting red dot, I should say. And then you have your, um, your optic plate that fits like Dr. Vortex, Burris, all of those other really popular branded optics. So it's cool that they have a, a very broad spectrum of plates that you can buy and put on this pistol, depending on whatever optic you might like best. But it's not cool that they don't provide it. I mean, $29, like, come on, dude. You could, you could like, how much, how much money do you honestly think it takes Beretta to make those optic plates? Like they mill out the slide or they, they, they basically put a piece of plastic, cut it out and send it off. I mean, <laughs> come on now that, that like you could include those in the price. If you, if you want me to pay $500 for this pistol and you throw in all of those optic plates, phenomenal. I will do that. But now I got to go through all of this hassle. I got to buy the plate. got to wait till it comes in. And then now I got to go buy another optic, which is, you know, or another part for this gun that's probably going to cost more than the gun is itself. But that's just me ranting. I will say that when you have a micro compact pistol, it is always good to take yourself out of the equation. The triggers are not as good as they are on performance pistols, such as Arcanics that we've reviewed in the past. This particular Canic, the little, the, the baby, the Canic rival. So you're not going to get as good of a trigger on one of these micro compact pistols. So anything that you can do to take yourself out of the equation, you're, you're pulling left, you're pulling right, depending on if you're left or right handed, that's going to be good. Okay. And that is what a red dot will do for you. You do lose your rear sight whenever you put a red dot on this pistol. So probably a con, it depends on who you are, who you ask. Uh, in my opinion, it is a big con with this pistol that you lose that rear sight. We, we, I spoke with someone on the channel earlier um, concerning losing your rear, I'll show you guys a pistol up close while I'm talking, but I spoke with someone on the channel about losing that rear sight. And they mentioned that comment when they were talking about the Canic rival that we have. And you know, honestly, I'm not that upset that I lost my rear sight on that pistol because I'm not, when it, I'm gonna be taking that pistol out to the range. I'm not gonna be concealed carrying it. I'm not going to be outside the waistband carrying it for that matter. So um, 
you know, in, in this case, if my optic were to fail, if my battery were to die, I'm not going to have anything to look through. And I promise you that if I'm going to use this pistol, I'm going to be carrying it. Yes, I'm going to practice with it. And okay, maybe battery dies out at the range. But, you know, if, if I were to go out and give me a Trijicon or something, I'm going to have to, in the middle of my battle, my battery dies. I'm going to have to take my optic off the slide. I'm going to have to change the battery. And then I'm going to have to reinstall it. So you better carry yourself an Allen key around with you because you're really going to need that. Like that's just, it's just absurd to me. So that's one of the, one of the things I don't necessarily like about this pistol would be that you lose that rear sight. The fact that you don't get your plates with it being a $450 gun. So, but other than that, I like the texture on the grip. It has a really good profile. It has a good feel to it. Like you can get a really good grip on this pistol. I don't think it will snag because it's not like a, 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 it's not that aggressive, I should say. It's not like sandpaper, but it is a very pretty stippling job that Beretta has done on this APX A1 pistol. The magazine, so you do get an eight-round magazine and you get a six-round magazine, both of which have little pinky extenders on them. They came from the factory like that. But you can elect to install this little uh, plate that came with it as well if you wanted a flush fit. So... As you can see with this pistol, if you did install that, it would be a very flush fit on the bottom. I can see it, but you guys probably can't. It'd be a very flush fit. So a really cool option, depending on what you like, what you prefer. It's always great to know that you can customize a pistol in that way. Overall, I kind of like this pistol. I like the way that it feels in the hand. Not crazy about the trigger, but not hating on the trigger because there's definitely some pros and cons to it love that sight set up but overall i probably will carry this pistol i hope this video really helped all of you that might be considering buying it might be comparing it to another micro compact nine millimeter out there or maybe this is going to be your first gun i recommend it if it's going to be your first gun because you can't go wrong with a beretta in my opinion if you enjoyed today's video smash that like button subscribe to the channel and please comment down below we love talking to you guys and interacting thanks for watching